Brianna. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're going to be reading some more scary stories. So I have a bunch of emails to get through and I have a couple Reddit stories and I have a couple Instagram DMs to read. I have my Wicked Candle in here. I have not gotten a Christmas candle yet, but I will hopefully maybe tomorrow. <laughs> and then I can show you guys a Christmas candle instead of a Halloween candle. Although the Wicked Candle does kind of go with the theme of my videos. But anyway, the wig that I'm wearing today is from Lush Wigs. They were kind enough to send it to me. They send it to me in like a long time ago, it was like October. If you guys are interested in trying out Lush Wigs, I will link them down below so you guys can definitely try them out. They're one of my favorite wig brands and they're amazing quality. So I don't have anything else to ramble about. So let's just jump on into the scary stories. So I'm gonna go to Instagram first because I have a Instagram story that I was sent today that I want to read and it was actually really freaking weird. So I'm not gonna give any names as I always do on Instagram. So this is just from an Instagram user that follows me and they said, hi. I have a few stories from my childhood, but I'll say the one that I remember the most. So starting off since I was one, I lived with my grandparents and one day me and my grandmother were running errands. We drove by this house and she was just staring at it this whole time while we were passing and she decided to turn around. I was very confused and I asked her why she was turning around and all she said was she needed to go talk to that woman. I said, okay, and we pulled into the driveway. I saw that this woman was moving stuff out of her house and my grandmother told me to wait in the car. As soon as my grandma got to the door and started talking to the lady, she fell to the ground while my grandmother was holding her. I was really confused at this point as we had never met this woman before in our lives. I had no idea who she was. And once my grandmother came back, she told me that a young man came to her and told her to check on his mom. And it turns out when my grandmother went up to the door and told her the reason, the lady that fell to the ground said her son had passed away a few days earlier and they were moving his stuff out of the house, which still gives me chills to this day. There was definitely other things, little things that happened to me growing up and seeing ghosts and my grandmother having dream premonitions, but that's the one story that I'll always remember because it's still super crazy. So her grandmother had a boy come to her and tell her to check on his mom and the boy had passed away and oh my god that's fucking insane. So thank you so much for sending that to me. That's such a creepy story. I mean it's creepy but like really sweet at the same time. And I'm going to jump over to Reddit now because I have quite a few Reddit authors that I have messaged in the last little while and I'm really excited to read some of them. So I was in the, I believe it was like the true scary stories or the ghost section because I wanted to get you guys some more like true stories. So this one is from the Reddit author, just Reddit, a sir. <laughs> and it's from the true scary story section. So this one's titled, a moment, a poltergeist tried to kill me. Me and my family moved into this house in Arlington, Texas. And at first, we didn't really expect anything bad to happen. The very first night that we moved in, or were about to move in, the landlord brought me and my brother up to our rooms, where me and him would be sleeping, and whispered in our ears that there was a demon in the house. Of course, we didn't believe her at first. You know, like we were just really skeptical. After a while, nothing happened, and it was just a new house for us. It was a really nice house and had a really old type of feeling to it, and we would always have our doors and windows open during the summer so the breeze would come through. After a while, my mom was taking a shower in the shared bathroom, and she recalled to us that she heard a blood-curling scream coming from inside the house. She thought it was one of us playing video games, so she grabbed a towel and she cautiously went to our bedroom to tell us to stop playing them. But when she got to her room, we were dead asleep. I made a new friend down the street from me. Her name was McKenna. She was the same age as me and we were always hanging out. One day, I invited her to come over while no one else was home because I low-key had a crush on her. And she came over and went to my bedroom and we put on a scary movie. As we were watching, out of nowhere, we heard every plate and glass in the kitchen fall down and break. I was thinking that someone had broken into the house. So I grabbed the baseball bat and told her to follow me and stay behind me. We snuck into the hallway and we both peeked our heads around the kitchen and every single cabinet and drawer was wide open. And as soon as we looked into the kitchen, we saw every single one of them slam shut. I immediately freaked out and started to run, but McKenna was frozen in place. She was looking at something with her jaw wide open and I grabbed her shirt and screamed, let's go. We ran outside and waited for my parents to get home. She went back to her house and texted me that she was never coming back to the house again. I understood, of course, but I asked her what she was looking at. She told me that she didn't want to talk about it and that she would tell me later. Eventually, when nighttime came, I didn't tell anyone because I didn't think anyone would believe me anyways. It was a school night and summer was over. Me and my brother had, was already asleep and I was trying to sleep, but for some reason, I just couldn't. So I laid in bed and I closed my eyes and as I was trying to sleep, out of nowhere, I felt a hand grab my hair. It felt like it was tugging me into the closet, which was directly behind me. Oh my fucking God. 
Jesus. I tried to scream and eventually my mom and my brother heard everything and came to me and comforted me. When my mom came into the room, I was laying on the floor kicking and screaming. I went to my mom's bedroom and I slept with her that night and I was trying to sleep. McKenna texted me. She told me something that absolutely terrified me. She said that whatever we were seeing in the kitchen that was next to the cabinet and drawers was a black figure of a man standing on all fours on top of the fridge like a spider. I completely felt paralyzed in fear and I grabbed my mom's arm and held on tight for the rest of the night. There was a lot more that happened, but long story short, my mom almost got killed by the poltergeist too. She was in the shed in the backyard putting the boxes away that we didn't unpack when we moved in and me and my brother were in the backyard playing. And out of nowhere, we heard my mom scream at the top of her lungs. She came burring out of the shed and as we ran to her, she was bleeding and said she broke her neck because she was on the ladder to put the boxes on top of the shelves tucked away in the back corner and a sharp stick was thrown at her and almost pierced through her eye. She had to go to the hospital because she broke her neck falling down. I'm confused, when you say she broke her neck, wouldn't she be dead then? Can you break your neck and not die? You keep saying she broke her neck. Do you mean like she broke her back? Because you can survive that, but I don't think you can survive breaking your neck. So that's a little bit confusing. So let us know in the comments down below what actually happened, if she what she broke, because that's terrifying. But oh my God, thank you so much for allowing me to read that story. That was so fucking scary. And Jesus Christ, I hate that so much. <laughs> so I'm going to jump over to the next one. This is from the ghost story section, and then it's from the author Open Strategy 2558. This one's titled Ghost Runner. I'm usually a skeptic when it comes to ghosts, but since living in a hundred year old house, things have gotten weird. I've gotten used to the bumps and shadows, but one night, things got really spooky. My wife was sleeping and I was laying in bed in the dark reading a book on my phone, when suddenly the dogs began barking and I heard a series of hard thuds against the floor as if someone was walking down the hall with work boots on. My wife must have heard it too because she lifted her head and asked what it was. We fell silent and again, it sounded as if someone took three slow steps down the hall. So for context, at the end of the hall is a small built-in utility room that leads out to the backyard. We quickly began thinking that maybe someone had come in from the back door. The dogs were still on alert when my wife asked me to pass her the pistol as she got up to assess the situation. It sounded like someone started charging down the hall towards the room. It scared the shit out of all of us. My wife ran out of the room with the dogs ready to shoot first and ask questions later, but there was no one there, not a soul. For more context, before we rented this house, my mom rented it. And when I told her about what had happened, she said the same thing happened to her. She heard running down the hall in the middle of the night and stood by her bedroom door with a crowbar only for no one to appear. Occasionally, I still hear heavy footsteps, but I ignore them now. Too bad I can't ignore it when they whispered my ear though. Oh my God, I don't know if that's a true story or not, but holy shit, that's fucking terrifying. And I hate that, I would move. <laughs> I would literally move. That is so fucking terrifying. Thank you so much for allowing me to read that story. That was fucking creepy. Holy shit. I'm gonna go to the next one and then I'll go to my email. This one's from the short scary story section and it's from the Reddit author Ranting Ant and it's titled, I cannot escape from it. As I lay in bed trying to fall asleep, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me. I tried to ignore it, telling myself it was just my imagination, but the feeling only grew stronger. I slowly sat up looking around my dark room. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary, but I could still feel eyes on me. I decided to get up and turn on the light hoping that it would dispel the eerie feeling. As I reached for the light switch, I heard a faint whisper in my ear, don't turn on the light. You don't wanna see what's in here with you. My heart pounded in my chest as I hesitated. My hand ran trembling over the switch. Part of me wanted to turn on the light and face whatever was lurking in the darkness, but another part of me was terrified at what I might find. I took a deep breath and mustered up my courage. I flicked on the light and to my horror, I saw the figure of my nightmares standing in the corner of the room. It was tall and thin, with pale skin and dark, empty eyes. It stared at me with a wicked grin, its elongated fingers twitching with anticipation. I tried to scream, but no sound escaped my lips. I was frozen with fear, unable to move or speak. The figure began to move towards me, its footsteps echoing in the silence of the room. I closed my eyes, bracing for the worst, but instead of feeling the creature's touch, I heard a loud crash and felt a gust of wind. I opened my eyes and saw that the window had been shattered and the figure was gone. I didn't know how I'd escaped or why it chose to spare me. All I knew was that I needed to get out of that room immediately. I grabbed my things and ran out of the house, not stopping until I reached the safety of my friend's house. As soon as I arrived, 
I called the police and told them what had happened. They came to my house and searched it, but they didn't find anything out of the ordinary. They even checked the window, but there was no sign of broken glass or the figure that had escaped through it. They told me it was safe to return to my house, but I was still too scared. I decided to stay with my friend for a few more days until I felt ready to go back. When I finally returned to the house, I was nervous, but I was determined to face my fears. I went to bed to get a good night's sleep, but as I lay there, trying to drift off, I felt the familiar feeling of being watched. I opened my eyes and saw the figure standing at the foot of my bed, its dark eyes fixed on me. You can't escape me, it whispered. I tried to scream, but once again, no sound escaped my lips. The figure reached out and touched my face, and I felt a sudden, overwhelming sense of dread. As I lay there, paralyzed with fear, I realized that the figure was not just some random monster. It was a manifestation of my own fears and anxieties brought to life by my own mind. No matter where I go, it will always be with me. No matter how fast I run, it will always catch up. I cannot escape from it. And that's how they ended the story. Holy shit, that was really good. That was very well written and holy crap, so creepy, I have goosebumps. So thank you so much for allowing me to read your story. And now I'm gonna go over to my email and I'm gonna read one of my emails because you guys are emailing me quite a bit and I need to get to some of them. And I'm very excited you guys are actually emailing me and stuff because that is so fucking cool. So I'm gonna go to one of my older ones because I really need to read it. So this is from <laughs> back in October. So they said, okay, dokie, so there's been some told to me about myself and there's some that I remember. I'll title them so they don't run all together. This one's titled The House Across the Street. The first one that I can remember clearly is from when I was in about second or third grade. I was at my best friend's house and literally right across the street from her house was an abandoned house. One day, her older brother and I were bored and we decided that we would check out the house. This was a very bad idea. We walked over the house and the first thing we saw outside was a wooden dog house with the name Spike painted on it. We looked at it for a second and then went inside. The house immediately smelt like death and we found out why really quickly. There was multiple deer heads separated from their bodies. We didn't know it at the time because we were around eight years old, but thinking about it now, it's obvious to me that there were rituals in that house because not only was there a decapitated deer, but also satanic symbols painted on the walls. We walked into the living room of the house and saw even more symbols. And my friend's brother was saying something, but then he stopped talking and pointed upstairs, signaling that he had heard something. As we started heading upstairs, her brother led the way. I was right behind him and she was following me. As we were halfway up the stairs, I turned to say something to my friend, but she wasn't there. Then I heard her scream. Her brother and I quickly turned and basically jumped down the stairs. To the right of the stairs was a room without a door, but had an orange curtain hanging. We heard my friend sobbing in that room. I asked her what had happened, and she told me that something grabbed her by the neck and drug her into the room, which after she got done telling us what happened, we heard rapid footsteps upstairs, so we bolted. I was the last one in line this time, and as I was about to get to the door, I heard a soft and quick, hey, don't go. And I turned around and I saw no one, so we left. I've never talked about it again. The next one's called Moving in Fourth Grade. Somewhere between third and fourth grade, my family moved from Texas to Colorado. For a little while, I didn't have a bedroom, so I slept in the living room with my mom. She slept with me because I was scared to sleep in the living room by myself. It was the second or third night of being in this house, and mom and I were up pretty late. We had the TV on, but my mom muted it because she thought she heard something out in the garage. I listened, and sure enough, I heard it too. It sounded like boxes shuffling and being moved around. At this time, we had a Yorkie, so we had a small dog door that went out to the garage. So my mom told me to go look through the dog door, and as I did, I didn't see anything for a few seconds. But then I saw one of the boxes move from one side of the garage to the complete opposite side by itself. The next one's titled, Are You Okay? Some time had passed since the last story and I finally had my own room. When I was younger, I couldn't sleep without the TV on, although it annoyed my brothers. One night, my brother Dallas woke up to go to the bathroom and he heard my TV turning on and off and changing channels. He also heard my drawers opening and closing. So he came into my room and saw all of this happening as well as me sitting straight up. He then asked me if I was okay and I slowly turned toward him and said, yeah, I'm fine and laid back down and everything stopped. So she was like sleep 
walking, but like not walking. She was just like turning the TV on and off. That's so weird. <laughs> the next one is titled Devil Dream. I also have very vivid and terrifying dreams. One dream that I remember when I had first moved into Colorado was extremely terrifying, especially for a fourth grader. In the dream, I was laying on my bed and I heard tapping from inside the closet and I looked at the bottom of the drawer and I saw a red glow. Then the door swung open and the first thing I saw was hooves and a tail. Then I looked up and I saw the devil himself and I woke up. Oh my God. Okay, so she has a couple more stories, but this is where I'm going to end the video here because my furnace just kicked in and I need to edit this and post it. So I'm gonna read more of her stories later, but her stories are really good and really creepy and she has quite a few more and I have quite a few emails to get through, but I don't want this video to be too, too long because we're already at the 20 minute mark on my camera and my camera starts to overheat. So this is where I'm gonna end the video. These stories were really creepy and I hope you guys enjoyed them, but thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below for more content like this and I will see you guys at the next video. Bye.